Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, yes, tomorrow is my birthday. Leo season. You know what I'm saying? In effect. But before, you know, my birthday, I wanted to drop this tea. Now, yesterday, me and Lady J did the podcast. So we talked about everything that was going on with Bishop Lamore Whitehead. And so after the podcast, because I hadn't really heard of him before this, but then I kept thinking to myself, this dude looks really, really familiar. Like, I feel like I've seen him around before, but with a rapper. And then I realized he was the bishop that was running around with 6 9 a few years ago. Because y'all remember, I was really deep into that 6 9 story. And remember, that's when he was on The Breakfast Club and, you know, quoting all them Bible quotes and, you know, talking about God and this and that. And um, he was running with this bishop at the time, and 6 9 was getting saved, and the bishop was claiming 6 9 is his boy. So once the pictures popped up, I'm like, there has to be more to this story. Something about this dude. This whole robbery, none of it makes sense. Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead. Some people call me the hip hop bishop. Boy, yo, before you anything, man, thank the Lord for everything, man. You know, the bishop had to come through. Give me out of situation, man, but thank the Lord. Pray with me. Man, Takashi is my guy. You know, I'm his bishop. We love you guys, and we're going to show you who he really is. That's a fact. They know. They it know does, the vibes. That's right. Uh -huh. It does a job. I mean, Thank you so much. Tell me about, you know, what happened today and uh, Takashi's Stop. involvement. Well, today we pretty much got justice, you know. We didn't, uh, they didn't send a young man to prison. You know, uh, they come to clergy, the district attorney, um, the elected officials, they come to clergy and say, listen, you know, how can you guys help us not put um, the kids in prison. So, to, so I met with the district attorney and I say he's one of my members. I'm going to mentor him. He came to me, he's humbled himself to my leadership, and he does not need to go to prison. So, listen, this is my brother, this is my friend. Um, he has um, accepted me as his bishop. Um, that whole word that I said today, I meant every word of it. And I just want to stand next to him, you know, as he just said a few words to y'all, just from off his heart. He just posted a video maybe yesterday or the day before where this young lady, the girl, she had brain cancer. And all she wanted to do was see Takashi. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And he fulfilled it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the kindness of his heart. Yeah. Let's look at the things that he's doing. Because I'm praying for him. I'm praying. Yeah. And I know God hear my prayers. Because the Bible says... The prayers of the righteous avail much. That's what the scripture says. And God can't go outside of his scripture. Amen. So if God ain't saying what he said in the scripture, I don't know what spooky stuff y'all listening to. You changed the world. Little old fat Joe from the Bronx changed the world. You know what I'm saying? And you thought bigger. You thought greater. And I thank you for supporting Chrissy and Dawn for what you've been doing. And I ask you to continue to do what you're doing. Listen, you need the hate to keep Woo! pushing, all right? The haters Woo! push you out of your comfort zone. Joey Craig! Your haters push you, excuse me, y'all, excuse me, excuse me. Can Joe have this moment? The Bible says that God did not bless Leah until he saw she was hated. Leah was barren, and she couldn't give birth until God saw that she was hated. That's why you're able to give birth to Terror Squad. That's why you're able to give birth to millions of records because God saw the haters. You needed the haters to push you to your success. Then he also has a lot of ties to Mayor Eric Adams as well. And I'm going to get back into that in just a second. Well, now, if you guys do not know, as of today, um, paperwork has come out basically showing that a woman in New York is suing Pastor Lamar Whitehead for stealing her life saving. She's saying that he stole over $90,000 from her. So I'm going to read to you guys this article from the Daily News, from the NY Daily News. A former congregant who claims that Whitehead fleeced her out of her life savings, Anderson 56 says that the flashy bishop 
promised that he would use her money to buy and renovate a house for her. Anderson said that she asked her pastor to buy her a home because she had a very low credit score. Instead, Whitehead allegedly disappeared with her $100,000 and never followed through with his promise. Whitehead, the pastor, then texted her and said that the $100,000 check that she gave him in 2001 was not an investment, but a campaign donation. Because at that point, he was running for Brooklyn Borough President. And if you guys know anything about Eric Adams, at one point in time, he was Brooklyn Borough's president, but now he's the mayor of NYC. So he was basically... Um, geared to take Eric Adams' old spot, but he ended up losing. We have uh, my boy, Eric Adams, and um, the first black borough president. Um, and I had a meeting with him yesterday, and we had a phenomenal experience. He's back in Leaders of Tomorrow, Brooklyn, 100%. We're going to be doing a lot of things together. And I just wanted to set this time, first of all, to say thank you. Mm. Thank you for mm. being um, a patriarch. Mm. for our black community. Thank you for being an advocate for our black community. Thank you for being an advocate for men. Thank you for showing our youth and showing a young man like myself to never give up mm. when the tables turn. Thank you. We just want to say thank you for leaders mm. of tomorrow, that. first mm. and foremost. And then he goes on to say this, and for the record, anything that was given to me as a donation, unless it's attached to a contract, I was making investments. That's what I do. So now this is some more stuff from the court documents. Court papers say that she expressed reservations because she had no other income besides the savings, which is when Whitehead offered to give her a hundred dollars monthly allowance while he sought a suitable home for her to buy. So because she was going to give him all his life savings, he said, I'll give you a hundred dollars a month to help pay your bills. I don't know who the hell in New York, let alone in the Midwest, honey, which is way cheaper than New York, can afford to live on a hundred dollar allowance. Like a hundred dollars, people's cell phone bills are a hundred dollars. How does he expect her to pay her rent currently, her light bill, food on a hundred dollar budget? So she should have known something was up right there, but she chose to go through with it. Woo! And they did not have any type of contract. So they go on to say she got no receipt. For the $90,000 cashier's check that she wrote to Lemoy Whitehead, Inc. on November 2020, according to the court filings. After the first month the allowance was paid in January 2021, Whitehead essentially disappeared and cited his campaign for Brooklyn Borough president as the reason why he was too busy. He said that Anderson's money had been invested wasn't easy to access according to the text messages submitted as exhibits to the lawsuit. The campaign finance records show that Anderson made a $175 donation to Whitehead's campaign in January 10th, 2021. On May 19, 2021, text messages submitted as evidence to the lawsuit. So now I'm going to read to you guys these text messages. This whole situation is a mess. Listen to how he tries to gaslight her. So this is a text message. Uh, Lamar says, good morning, Rashid. You are a liar. So Rashid is her son. So now her son has gotten involved and her son is contacting, um, the pastor because it's like, hold up, you were supposed to help my mom. And now you're basically ghosting her. So this is a pastor replying back to Rashid. So he says, good morning, Rashid. You are a liar, and I promise you God will deal with you. If you want to hire a lawyer, then contact me. At this point, you are a liar and a deceiver. Nothing you have said is accurate, and you have a demon that only God can deal with. Now watch God's judgment upon your life. Psalms 105.15. Then he goes on to say, you are trying to make false documents by text. You will see how much God loves me. You are a liar and a deceiver. I am in awe of how the devil is using you. However, I know it was coming. Now be aware of the hand of judgment will hit your life and everything that is connected to you. Then he says, I will also send you proof and bills from people that I have hired months ago to start the process of investments. And for the record, anything that was given to me is a donation unless it's attached to a contract. I was making investments. That's what I do for the record. And then his mom ends up replying back. So they're using his phone because at this point, the pastor was not replying back to anything coming from the mother's phone. If the mother called him, if she texted him, he would ignore it. So he must not recognize Rashid's number, and that's why he responded back. So now the mom is replying back, and she says, all this because what? 
because you took money that you refused to pay back and now you're quoting scripture to serve your purpose. This is so offensive. And did you just go there? You said you were a man of integrity. Where was all of this? Where was all of this in that? So much passive aggressive tone in your conversation. I told you already we're not having a back and forth. This is not my style. It shouldn't be yours as you lead followers. Think about that. Now you're actually asking God to strike my son because you both fell out with each other. Unbelievable. I don't have to tell you who you are. Every time you text, it speaks to the heart of who you are. And then she goes on to say this. I am hereby notifying you, Bishop, that as of today, you have five business days to return the money. May 25th, 2021, or I will be notifying the police, the press, and your campaign. So that is a text message from their exchange. So do you see how this man, like we said yesterday in the, in the podcast, when he was just going back and forth with Larry and that woman... And, you know, just arguing with them. He's calling the woman Biggie. He's mocking her. He's body shaming her. He's calling, you know, Larry the F word. I mean, the spirit of narcissism. He wants to quote devil. He wants to say that somebody else has the devil in them. He needs to look at the mirror because the spirit of narcissism, the devil is in him. The way he reacts to stuff, the way he just goes off the handle. This man has a lot of issues. And like I said, when I saw that exchange between him and Larry, I'm like, this is not a man of God. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch the video with him and Larry going back and forth. And I'm also going to show you um, his response to some of that stuff. There's nothing genuine about this man. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am, 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 ma'am. Hold, <laughs> no, no, on, one no, 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 no. hold on one second. Hold on one second. Nobody wants to talk show. to you, Biggie. Nobody wants to talk to you, Biggie. You don't have Biggie, any respect all right? for women. No, no, no. Don't talk about women now. Show. Don't talk about women. You don't have because any because y'all laugh. Y'all laugh when the, when, the, when we when the Larry said talking about if that's really true. That's what you said, Larry. And y'all laugh. And what you did was and what you did was you laid on your carpet. You laid on your carpet and pre pretended to be me. You're disrespectful, okay? You're disrespectful. This man won't clap and at the end of so the bad. day, that's why Larry. At the end of the day, Larry. At the end of the day, I respected you. And you, you want to talk about the uh, the, the, the 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 LBGT community? We had, a, we had a conversation. We had a conversation, and my position was that I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm not if if if, if homosexuality. Is an abomination. No, you're you're mean. You're mean. I'm, what are you talking about? I'm mean. How am I mean? You're I'm mean. not mean. You're mean. I, hold on. You're mean. You're, you're mean. mean. Because at the end of the day, y'all sitting here and laughing at something that four gunmen could have took my family life, and y'all sitting here making a mockery of it. All right. We are and not. This big blip right here want to sit here and talk about women. We are not. All right. And you want to sit here and you want to sit here and validate homosexuality because you just admitted that you're a faggot. All right. That's on. Day. I didn't I tell y'all. <laughs> did not yeah, tell everybody. That's what that's what you I said. said it. That's why you said it. That's why I said it. That's why I said it. Knows the spirit that you operate by. No, 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 no. no. Everybody you have understands the response. Of religion, everybody knows the understands the response. All right, understand the response. I treated you with nothing but respect. I treated you with nothing but respect, all right? And you are a foul individual. You do not have you the level of integrity. You, you do not have the level of intelligence or self-control that you need. Who cares about your that, diamonds? That is horrible. Just start and making, that is not even true. Making money. You just start terrible. making money. You just start you, making money. It ain't the truth. And, and you got children and members. I, I at all. So you, can go, you can go to Bishop Jordan, and you can talk to Bishop Jordan. You can talk to Bishop Jordan and say, oh, I brought the bishop. And I said, that ain't right. Let me tell you something, all right? Long as God got me, I don't need none of y'all. I don't need none of you. None of you. All right? None of you. All right? And at the end of the day, you violated, Larry. You violated. Y'all laughing about what happened in my church. We are not. You making that up. Listen, not let me tell you, Larry, 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 true. you ain't built like that. All right? You That's a whole true. sucker. You ain't built like that. And this I'm not built like right what? here, what does, what does that mean? At my what daughter and my father and, and my family, you're what a does blimp. That mean? You're a fat blimp, all right? And at the end of the day, let me tell you this, right? My my family and my church could have got killed. My family and my church could have got killed, okay? And y'all sitting here laughing about it. Sitting here laughing about it, all right? And y'all we all not. foul. You're foul. Larry we Reed, Larry Reed, I treated you with nothing but respect when you came to my town. Mm. Nothing but respect, all right? Town. And you I, I was at my bishop house. No, I'm talking about in New York City. 
I'm talking about in New York City. I treat you with nothing but respect. Nothing but respect. Nothing but respect. I ain't never talk about you, and I actually defended you when people talked about you. I said, I, I, I don't get that experience from the brother. The brother's cool mm -hmm. with me, all right? But you want to know what? You showed your face, and you allow money to drive you. You talk about everybody, and you talked about me. Oh, and this is, and, and I ain't talking about you. You I talked about, I listened to you. Now, to now you. your I video is on CNN and everywhere so what? because I posted it. I was the first person to put you your kidding. video out. You should be telling me thank you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Because <laughs> you, you think so Larry me, Reed, Larry Reed got me on CNN, right? Larry Reed, you're smoking. That's like you get everybody I know, else on, on I know the weed. I know I'm weed is legal. I know weed is legal. I know weed is legal. I know weed is legal. You popped up here. Hey, okay. to come over here. Listen, listen. I was already in the media before you even posted anything. I saw when you tagged me. Okay, I saw you when you tagged me, Larry. You're not that big, brother. You're not that big. Okay. You're not, you're foul. <laughs> and this woman who calls uh, the woman of God, she's foul. Yeah, you really and talk that's about why. Yeah, and really that's why I violated the both of y'all. And let me tell you, anytime, anytime you ready, anytime you ready. We can, we can do a lie. We can do whatever. Don't say and talk about my Bible. And you want to say, oh, oh, and he talk about real I'm going to say what I yeah. want to say. You, I, and I, I'm going to say what I want to say. say. And, and I, I you was disrespectful. Jokes. Yeah, you, you was cannot disrespectful. Take jokes. But you got the right one, brother. You, you cannot right take one. jokes. You cannot What's take jokes. jokes. You don't jump when they make my family lie down. All right? Right? You don't jump. You don't Angel. jump. Child, that entire exchange between him, Larry, and that female pastor was just crazy i've never seen nothing like that well then of course he took to his own instagram page to basically explain himself in like a 40 minute video i just screen recorded a few clips i'm not going to put the whole 40 minutes in here but i just wanted to show him you know coming back the next day apologizing to the lgbt community ignore the messages that are popping up from the beehive because they have been in my dms all day <laughs> but y'all go ahead and check this out i don't hate anybody i was hurt so now he's trying to flip it to make it seem like I'm homophobic and I'm against the LGBT community, which I'm not. You live whatever life you want to live. I teach the Bible. I don't hate anybody. Last year, I ran for the president to be the president of Brooklyn. I went before the LGTB community and they was in support of me because of the plans that I had for them for them not to be harassed and for them to be respected as people as a culture it's your civil right to be who you want to be but church hurt hurts and to see these two pastors try to distort and destroy the pain of my church. And then now he wants to try to discredit me for what? My church was robbed. Why would you use this as a platform to hurt your brother? So I don't really care about them. I care about if I offended anyone. If I offended the LGBT community, I apologize. But I did not mean no harm. Please don't look at what they say because I'm sure that the tabloids are going to try to mix this and spin it around. I'm ready for it though. All right, so you guys just saw those videos. Now what's so interesting is that back in 2016, People were kind of blasting Eric uh, Adams for his affiliation with the bishop. And basically at that point, one of the newspaper articles stated, Eric Adams stands by ex-con who pushed bogus youth program claims. So this man has been in the news for a while for scamming. And Eric Adams is still standing besides him. Well, now let me take y'all down another rabbit hole. There's a young woman on um, TikTok who decided to read through all of the paperwork concerning this bishop okay she decided to go through everything and really find out what was going on with this guy because she was not feeling him especially after he went on his homophobic rant towards larry and this woman's name is nerdy pink panda and when i tell you she went in she really did some digging and some searching and i feel like there is definitely more than meets the eye 
I'm glad I'm not the only one who felt like that was not a legitimate robbery. It was something about it that just felt disingenuine. Um, the guy just sitting back there acting like nothing is going on. And if you guys can adjust the camera to move away from the robbers, why would you not adjust the camera to focus on the robbers? So that way they could be properly apprehended. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys her videos. Go ahead and check this out. Oh, Bishop Lamar Whitehead, I've been uh, doing some digging on his Instagram live feeds and this man is getting guiltier and guiltier every time he opens his mouth. So this is him a couple hours ago on his Instagram Live where he gets into it with a couple of bloggers. Did not do anything wrong to you. Why are you doing this? And he began to mock me. And then another young lady began to laugh and was mocking me. And I began as a, hu a human, human. I, I, I became human. Next part's not very godly of him called him we know what you called him the young lady a blimp I said you're biggie oh yeah you know he didn't really mean to call them those names but this you this you bestie Ooh, and y'all should read his church bio because that's a trip too All right, I am completely sleep deprived, but I went down one hell of a rabbit hole and oh my gosh, you have to come with me. I feel like at this point, we're all pretty familiar with Bishop Lamar Whitehead. He was the pastor who was robbed at gunpoint on social media, et cetera, et cetera. And it's come out that he actually spent time in prison for identity theft for $2 million. And I just spent the last two hours reading all of his appeals. Yes, all of them. My eyeballs feel like they're gonna fall out, but it was totally worth it because it was a fascinating ride. But before I start, this is a little bio from his website where he said he was sentenced for 11 and one third to 34 years in prison. Not true, he was sentenced from 10 to 24 years. He also claims that his sentence was overturned after six years. Again, not true. In fact, towards the end of his sentence, he was actually sentenced to an extra 118 days. He just literally got out for good behavior. The story starts in 2005 when a woman received a call from a credit company asking about her loan application. But here's the thing, she never applied for a loan. However, someone had purchased a motorcycle in her name. One month later, Whitehead was actually arrested riding the motorcycle that was bought in her name. Then the detectives were able to trace back the number that was associated with the loan back to a fraudulent phone number. And it turns out there were like 10 of them with a bunch of different voicemails, etc., etc. All of them leading back to Whitehead. He even had recorded outgoing messages on these voicemails. They then were able to trace the names back to a car dealership in which his girlfriend at the time worked at. He had coerced her into giving him the password to her computer, as well as the names of all the people with good credit. Then when they arrested him again, it turns out the Land Rover that he was driving was also a car that was purchased with a fraudulent loan application. Now here's where things get a little dicey. So he had two homes, one in New York, one in New Jersey. In the New York one, they found some cell phones, fake IDs, documents, and then one in New Jersey, they found a laptop and some other documents and cell phones. Throughout the course of this, he had four different lawyers. So lawyer one asked for a discovery and they, uh, ADA only included the documents and the cell phones from the New York home because the New Jersey stuff was outside the scope of discovery legally required to turn over. So lawyer one told Whitehead that they didn't really have much to stand on and that it was probably gonna get dropped. He gets indicted with 10 different counts of things. So that's when they fire lawyer number one. In comes lawyer number two. She also asks for discovery, and this time she actually goes and physically rummages through the discovery. Now the ADA said that they didn't have the warrant for the laptop there with them, but it was there and she can look at it whenever she wanted, but apparently she didn't. Now this laptop had all of the software that was downloaded from the car dealership. So all of the victims were on there. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do a part two to this. <laughs> You got it. Here's part two. And here's a mugshot of Lamar Whitehouse, soon to be Bishop. Now, at some point, the ADA comes to lawyer number two with a plea deal saying if he pleads guilty, he'll do one year in jail. She laid out for Whitehouse the evidence that she had seen, not including the laptop because she never looked at that. So he declines the deal and decides to go to trial instead. Lo and behold, suddenly this laptop shows up in evidence and he is charged with 56 counts of identity theft. At that point, lawyer number two gets the ax, and in comes lawyer number three. Now, White House tells lawyer number three that he does not have the affidavits for the search warrants. She, in turn, requests it from the ADA, who then gives it to her. However, apparently she was running for political office at the same time, so she was very hard to get a hold of. Apparently, he only even saw her in court. 
she never tells him that she got the affidavits and she doesn't challenge them in any way which honestly probably because you know he was guilty or perhaps it's because november 2007 was when pre-trial started and then that's when the orders for motion to suppress etc etc started happening however uh, Whitehead had already told the court that he was going to get a new lawyer. She was just going to stay there until he found one. And it was January 2008 that those affidavits ended up on her desk. So genuinely lost in the shuffle, or maybe she just didn't give a fuck. So then on the first day of the trial, the last day he could get a new lawyer, lawyer number four finally came through. So now he's playing catch up on this whole case, trying to sort through three other attorneys' files. And basically, the lawyer lost his chance to suppress any evidence or at least challenge it, although I don't think they had anything to challenge. The detective on the case, his testimony lasted seven days. And apparently, on one of those days, the court clerk forgot to remind him that he was still under oath. And the lawyer missed it. But you know what? In a way, Whitehead was acquitted of 17 of the 34 counts against him. All right, now this next part's weird to me because I've watched a lot of crime shows and I've never heard of this happening. But he ended up being sentenced... Uh, from 10 to 20 years like they didn't give him a number they just said eh sometime in between here you'll be free and I've never heard of them not giving a number so if anyone can explain that to me let me know so then way down the line he tries to argue that he had ineffective counsel which he kind of lost the right to do unless it was immediately on direct appeals so you can't just decide you don't like the outcome of the case and decide they were incompetent later on but then he tried to get slick. Remember how he was arrested on the motorcycle for the very first time and put everybody on his radar? Well, he still hadn't been tried for what he was arrested for with that. And that case was in New Jersey. And prior to this trial, he had made a deal with them. So then he thought he could argue in court that that deal negated that entire trial. And then somehow, after he gets out in 2013, becomes best friends with the now mayor of New York, Adams. And we'll dive into that sketch next. Yep, the mayor of New York is besties with Lamar Whitehead. I'm not even exaggerating when I say there are dozens of pictures of these two together online. Here they are wearing casual polo shirts and once again doing the polo shirt thing. So the details on their friendship are kind of murky, like the who, what's, where's, and how, blah, 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 how they met. But uh, an associate close to Eric Adams said that they probably met in the 90s during the 100 Cops for Good something i don't know some nypd program he piloted which is kind of weird because whitehead's father legendary political activist arthur miller was beaten to death by 16 cops and since none of those cops were ever brought up on charges my guess is it's a little bit of guilt anyhow uh whitehead had a history of using this to advantage because he would say that his youth program would shadow NYPD officers and all this stuff. It got so bad that the district attorney and the New York Police Department had to give him a cease and desist. Stop saying that we're involved with your program because we're not. Now, May of 2022 is where this gets interesting because that's when Whitehead's popularity skyrocketed. A man by the name of Andrew Abdullah shot and killed a Goldman Sachs employee on the platform of a train. This is when Whitehead called up his now elected mayor friend, Eric Adams, and said he was here on behalf of the family wanting to negotiate a surrender. He said he would bring him to the police station, but Eric Adams had to be there, which is extremely ill-advised for many reasons that I'm not going to get into now. However, while these negotiations were taking place, Abdullah was meeting with a legal aid attorney, and then that's where police intercepted him in case he was going to flee. Then according to the lawyer, he had nothing to do with the family. Although Whitehead claims that his aunt was a member of the congregation, it has never been confirmed that she called for him for help. He did, however, show up back to the police station for Abdullah's booking solo in a white Rolls Royce dressed in Fendi, earning him the nickname the Bling Bishop. Ironically enough, a former volunteer for Eric Adams' mayoral campaign had actually sued this man in the past. He claimed that he had stolen $19,000 off of the sale of a house that he had done for him, but he dropped the suit because he was already in jail at that point. It wasn't until recently that the youth's program then evolved into the service side of the church, which is just another reason why this whole thing is just a big setup. And despite being a mortgage broker and a real estate agent, I looked up his net worth and it's about $2 million in assets. I also read reports that his income was around $85,000. So how does this man have a million dollars in diamonds, a Maserati, a Bentley, a Rolls, 
He spent his birthday having a closed shopping trip at Versace. But I found the original unedited version of the robbery. Oh, and I'm going to play it for you in the next video because I have some thoughts. Oh, well, let me help you out there, bestie, because here's part four. I want to just show you a video from Instagram that gives us a layout of this place. All right, now check out the position of this camera. Notice how tall and sturdy this camera is right there. That camera's way up and it's surrounded by things, all right? Remember that. Die. What you about to go through. Yo, yo. All right, all right, right. All right, all right. All right now watch this camera. It moves right. once. And then it moves twice, just so that he is just out of frame. Like you can still see him, but you can't see the jewelry being taken off of him. Hmm. All right, now we see one person going over there. Now they are going over there and they are getting stuff off of the pastor. The other guy had ran over and is reportedly like collecting stuff from the wife. Now, oh. come back, he's gonna to drop something yep drop something picks it back up goes away Nobody move. now watch this guy over here just doesn't move the entire time which is bizarre all right now someone else is coming over to come you know snatch the chains off of the pastor and he's gonna do this weird like fish flop move that's apparently him like ripping the collar to get to the secret chains that weren't even visible. So how did he know that they were even there? Now watch, he's gonna walk away and I swear, he's gonna make eye contact with the kid over here. And I'm pretty sure this kid is, yep, there it was, see? I'm pretty sure that that's the son. Now the third person is coming over here to again go through the passer stuff. Then he runs off. Why did all three of them have to go there? Now watch. Reportedly, the, they just left. And now watch how fast the pastor walks away. All right, so it's assumed that they all stand up after the robbers leave, right? And then that's when Whitehead gets up and kind of meanders after them. You saw how fast they were running. He's, he's a brisk walk. But somehow, after that time, and at that pace, he was able to get out there in time to see them changing in the back seat of a Mercedes Benz and drive away. Oh, and also a little suspicious that they didn't grab that iPad that was sitting right there on the pulpit. And later off screen, his wife says something about another iPad. So there's two iPads, an expensive camera, and no other person in the congregation was hit. Nope, I ain't buying it. So I was about to finally take a nap when this happened. Surprise, the good pastor stole one of his parishioners' life savings. According to a lawsuit filed last year, 56-year-old Pauline Anderson gave $90,000 to the pastor. She wanted to buy a home, but had bad credit, and he said that he could buy it for her. She didn't want to do this because she was living off of her life savings, but he gave her $100 a month allowance and then just was holding on to the money while he looked for the perfect home. During this time, he was running for borough president, which he lost, and he was pretty hard to get a hold of, apparently. Then suddenly he stopped giving her her monthly payments, and he sent her in a text message that he was considering it a donation to his campaign. And since they didn't have a contract nor a receipt, he could do whatever he wanted with it. He was introduced to this woman after she had had a life-saving surgery, and he prayed with her. Apparently, a month after he sent that text message, he accidentally emailed her a copy of the $4.4 million property he was trying to buy. I now officially live to see this man go down. All right, so y'all just heard what she had to say. She definitely broke down a lot of stuff. And like I said, it's something about this entire situation that does not sit well with me. The fact that he's moving into a $4 million home, he's running around here with, you know, Rolls Royces. He's going to the scenes of crimes, you know, trying to attach himself, you know, during the whole Q train situation with the shooter, trying to attach himself to the mayor and say that he's the mentor and a friend. But he's pulling up in a Rolls Royce. He's pulling up in a whole Fendi outfit. It's like, you know... I don't understand who he's trying to front for. Hello. Any comments, sir? I'm going to go to a press conference right now. Let me call. Is this your car? No.
He gives me nothing but scammer vibes. And the fact that he went to prison for years for scamming, I would not be shocked. Because again, who the hell wears $90,000 worth of jewelry to church? It just doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, you know, you can buy what you want to buy. That is your business. You spend your money how you want to spend it. But my issue is the showboating. Because like I said, a lot of people in New York are struggling right now. So why are you flossing your gems, your jewels, your high-end stuff in front of the wolves? It does not make any sense why he's doing that. You know, it's like he's looking for attention. But now supposedly the wolves have come to rob him. But did they really come to rob him? Or was this a setup? Because I find it interesting that he could run outside and see them getting changed in the Mercedes. But he didn't write down the license plate number. He didn't take any pictures. And why would robbers do a crime in a Mercedes. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you not have a hoopty? Why would you show up in a flashy car to go rob this flashy bishop? So I feel like there's going to be more to this story. And the thing that's kind of bothering me with this whole Eric connection with Eric Adams, as we all know, Eric Adams has been talking really tough about fighting against crime in New York. That's been like his whole mantra. He even had a whole situation with drill rappers where he was trying to ban drill rap um, out of New York. And me and BL Sherelle, we talked about that on the podcast a few months ago. So he's been, you know, he has like this really tough on crime approach. And even when this happened with his BFF, he came out and he basically pledged to catch the criminals who robbed his bishop during mid-sermon. So let me read to you what the mayor says. So Mayor Eric Adams vowed Monday to hunt down the three gun-toting suspects who robbed a preacher friend of his in the middle of a live stream church sermon in Brooklyn over the weekend. No one in the city should be a victim of an armed robbery, let alone our faith leaders and our congregants, worshiping in the house of God. He then added that he spoke with his pal, Bishop Lamore Whitehead, on the phone shortly after the Sunday robbery. The NYPD is investigating this crime and will work tirelessly to bring the criminals involved to justice. So that is what the mayor had to say about his friend. And now I'm starting to see a setup in this. One, the mayor has this tough on crime approach. You know what I'm saying? And what better way to look like he's really on top of something and he's solving crimes and bringing criminals to justice than maybe them plotting this. You know, I'm not saying that the mayor had anything to do with this, but he might look at it like a win-win for him. You know, the whole thing to me reeks of a setup. Is this something that they came together to make him look like a hero? Um, you know, the mayor, and then that way the mayor can eventually help him become the Brooklyn borough president eventually. Um, is this something just simply on the pastor's end? But the fact that Eric Adams' name is constantly being brought up and they're very close, it almost seems like it could be a, a setup by multiple people, you know, because this ended up being an international story. And I think the reason why this man is just having a narcissistic breakdown and got so upset at Larry reading them is because people who have common sense and discernment can tell that there's something fishy with this story. Something is not adding up. And he's mad because the public is not buying it. Because, again, if he was in control of his emotions, he would not have lashed out like that with the body shaming and the talking down to them and, and you know, calling them out their name. He wouldn't have did that if he was secure in what he was saying. If this was something real, there's no reason to get mad. Like we say in the South, a hit dog will holler. And he definitely hollered, yelped, and howled, okay, during that interview. Now, as of today, one of his ex um members of his church is speaking out. She did an interview with the man called Ten Toes Down, and she was really spilling some tea on what was going on in the church and why she feels like this was a whole setup. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys her video. Y'all go ahead and watch this. So uh, my question is this, right? When it came to him and with the whole robbery, when you seen it, the live stream, what do you think happened? Do you believe that that was something that happened or what? Nah, I, I I know how he operates, so I know that he got these guys to come in and do this. First, he said that he put he told his parishioners to get down. He never said anything to his parishioners. Number one, number two, when they came in, notice how they tilted the camera. They tilted the camera to keep the people that went in there. He his job was to keep them safe, the robbers. So they, he made them tilt the, the camera, right? 
so they won't be on cameras because he promised them like they're you're not going to get caught like i got you so, so his angle was to have them come in so he can get robbed and do an insurance claim because when you have a business which clearly he does you can hide your jewelry or make the claim as who you are in the um in the business line and you can write that off if anything gets stolen so he's he's really not losing by getting anything stolen like that he has a real estate class that he does quote unquote and he takes people's money from the classes but he doesn't have he's never sold a house no one's ever bought a house from him but he said he said he owned the block. I seen him argue with the other pastor. Said he if owned he, the. If he owns the block, why doesn't he have his own church? He doesn't own a building. You're renting. He's been renting for the past five years. He doesn't own anything. He rents everything. So that's not his church. That's not his church. That's where he. I thought he, he owned, owned that church. That's, but you have to pay attention. That's why there's no storefront. That's why there's nothing. That says any reference to the church except for the banners that's inside. Anytime anybody has a church, you always put signs outside. That's the first thing that you do when you have a church. He doesn't have anything to represent outside of who he is and where he's coming from. That's not his church. He's renting that building. God damn it. So when he See? said when he said that they came in and he went out and he chased them, but then he had to turn around and go back upstairs. To get the keys and then come back down. Number one, you have a Rolls Royce. Who is keeping their car keys anywhere except for on their on their person? All right. So you he said that them, he chased them. He grabs his wife. This is my theory. Grabs his wife. Rolls to the airport. Drops her off at the airport. Made sure that the guys got to the train station so they could jump on the flight. And he went back because the. the there's no, there's no yellow tape out there, anything to say that it, anything even happened. You made the call and then you left, and you left all your parishioners inside. You didn't stay with them. You chased them down for what? You saw that they changed their clothes and everything. Yeah, I was saying that too. I was saying he didn't take no license plate. He didn't take a nothing. picture. He didn't call the police. Nothing. But you well, seen them changing in the car. Robert Church in a C class. I'm confused. <laughs> I know how I know he somehow tied in with the mayor though. I know that much. So he's tied in he, with the he, mayor though. Him, him and okay, so him and um Eric Adams. Mayor, yes, Eric Adams are very, very, very good friends, right? Eric Adams cannot play his position in this right now because Eric Adams is gonna bring too much attention to him. But when he was running for office, Whitehead was running for office. Eric Adams was endorsing him, and he was supporting him, and Whitehead was doing the same things. Most dignitaries, the majority of dignitaries, they always go to the church. Why? Because people in the church have money, and they're going to support any kind of um, any kind of um, political leads, right? Because this is this is how they get their money. This is how they get their stamp. But once. Whitehead, because it started coming out about his background, they had to, we had to pull out. So this is why he never made it into any kind of um, political realm because Eric Adams, it was getting too hot for him and it was going to make him look stupid. But just the same way, like um, Adams, when Giuliani had got hit on the shoulder by the guy that was just giving him, you know, telling him you, you did a good job and uh -huh. eric adams said that he was going to press charges on giuliani for making a false claim it's uh -huh. the same thing that he should be doing for whitehead but he can't do that or he's not going to do that because that's his friend all right so you guys just heard what she had to say so it looks like she has some inside knowledge of um you know, just the inner workings of the church, the fact that he was renting the church. And that's one thing me and Lady J were saying, like that looked like a 
bodega, like a store. Like you got millions of dollars, but you're renting out this little church. Why not buy a church? You bought a $4 million home. You know, like she said, there's no name in front of the church. You wouldn't know it was a church if you were walking by it. And that makes no sense because usually when it's a church, there's signs, there's banners on the outside. So that way people walking on the streets can come into the church and, you know, and hear the word of God, hear the gospel. So something is not right with that. And on top of that, most churches, especially nowadays, there's going to be some type of security. You know, even if it's private security, undercover security, there's usually some type of security or men from the church who play security child, you know, right there. And it seemed to me very interesting that he can walk around with damn near a million dollars with the jury, but he has no personal security around him. He had nobody to like, you know, up on those guys. Everything to me with this case from the time I heard about it seems suspect. And now that more information is coming out about this man's character, I don't trust it. I'm not buying any of this mess. So anyways, y'all, that's my breakdown. That's my update on this situation concerning Bishop Lemoy Whitehead. Let me know y'all's thoughts on this. What do you guys think? Do you guys feel like, you know, he was, you know, robbed, he's a victim? Or do you feel like there's more to the story? And then how do you guys feel about his connection to 6 9 but most importantly, Mayor Eric Adams? Do you guys feel like, you know, could there be other people involved in this, you know, just to go viral, just to get attention, you know, um, and a possible insurance scam where they could split the money? So this is going to be very interesting, but I think more stuff is going to come down the pipeline and it does not look good. I think he has basically opened up a can of worms. He should have just sat there and ate his food instead of trying to floss. That's really what he should have did because I think there's going to be a thorough investigation. And if they catch those guys, if those guys aren't able to get off scot-free in the way he possibly or allegedly promised them, they're going to sing like a canary. And I think if those guys get caught, they're going to blast him and say that it was a setup and tie in whoever else they need to tie into it. So this is going to be a very interesting story to watch. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Don't forget to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to my channel because once again, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Okay? Yes, I said it for like the millionth time. Anyways, I will talk to y'all later. Have a good night. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.